So today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions on Kenneth Cole Copper Black. This one did come out last year in 2020. You can get this one on Fragrance Net for around $20 or so, kind of putting it in the cheapy category. One thing to keep in mind, this is for a 50 ml bottle. Uh, so I believe that's the only size they have here and something to keep in mind So actually the way I discovered this one was when Macy's was having their Black Friday sale and their Cyber Monday sale They had to select a few fragrances uh, at a discount and this was one of them And it was one that I hadn't really heard of before ended up looking at the note breakdown The note breakdown is really attractive on this one And so I decided to pick it up. It's been sitting around for a little while obviously So now I figured it would be time we dive into this one I'm gonna tell you how it smells if it reminds me of anything and off the first impressions of I think it's going to be something that's worth picking up and if it's something that I'll revisit for a full review. So here's the bottle, not really a whole lot to it, this will fit in the palm of your hand pretty much, pretty small, little 50 ml bottle, uh, cap does click into place, it doesn't feel bad, doesn't feel exceptional either, it's what you would expect from the brand and for a lower budget scent. We'll go ahead and get this one on skin, the atomizer is pretty solid, let's see what it's all about here. So. As it sits right now, I'm getting a good amount of alcohol blast and not the boozy note, but like perfumer's alcohol. So I'm gonna let it calm down, but now as it's starting to come around, I'm picking up on a little bit of a spiciness. And a slight fresh floral component. There's a good amount of woods in here as well, like a, a drier cedar wood type of thing. It gives off a masculine edge, which is a nice balance because Without that woodiness, this could almost lean in the feminine direction, in my opinion, or more unisex, given that there's a bit of like a fresh floral component, almost like a, just a, like a different type of freshness here. So it's opening up a little bit unique. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this note breakdown here. Up top, we have apple, ginger, mandarin leaf. In the mid, we have bourbon, whiskey, cardamom, and leather. In the base, we have vanilla, guyac wood, and tonka bean. So, Again, the note breakdown was what drew me into this one, primarily the whiskey note, the vanilla, that combination is something that I love to see. And you don't always see that in a more affordable fragrance. So I'm getting a little bit of the whiskey, but it's not overpowering. It's not to the point of, you know, some niche fragrances out there that are so overpowering with their boozy notes that you would be kind of afraid to wear it out in public or even more wear it to work because you might smell like you rolled out of bed with a fifth of whiskey. It's not something that you want to roll up to work smelling like. Well, maybe you do, but not everyone would. And so it doesn't come across that way. There's overall a surprising amount of balance with this one. It's not unproportional. It's not like you're getting nothing but whiskey, nothing but vanilla, nothing but leather, that sort of thing. Like you may get with some cheap fragrances when they can't really establish a good balanced blend. Again, it opened up with uh, you know a heavy dose of perfumer's alcohol, which is somewhat to be expected from a, a fragrance of this caliber. But it really didn't take it too long to settle down. And from there, you could pick up on some cardamom, aiding to that spiciness. I think the uh, woody note that I was picking up on more so was a leather, like a masculine textured rough leather accord that I was getting here, kind of giving it that balance that I was describing. I mean, there is the guyac wood in here, but it, that typically doesn't give off this type of smell. So there's a good amount of a rugged, you know, kind of masculine smell in the base. And again, all of that provides a nice balance when you have the vanilla and the tonka bean, which can sweeten things up and make it a bit more powdery and to some may make it a bit feminine or unisex leaning. So this one is an eau de toilette concentration. Would have liked to see something a bit heavier. I think given the note breakdown, this fragrance still trends a little bit perhaps on the fresh side. Not fresh like, you know, an aquatic or a citrus fragrance, but it doesn't give them the amount of depth and richness like you would expect from initially looking at this note breakdown. And I was kind of, you know, thinking that to begin with when looking this one up, given the price point. That's why, you know, people ask, oh, why don't you just wear cheapies? Why do you spend all this money on a fragrance? Well, sometimes we want things with more depth. And I'm not saying that there aren't cheap fragrances that can do it because there are some out there, but they are kind of few and far between in the grand scheme of things. To get something with, you know, good amount of depth and complexity and richness, you have to up your budget to get stuff like that. If you would have taken this same note breakdown 
and put that into a niche fragrance, you would have a completely different scent. And I think we can agree there. There just isn't a whole lot to this one that's gonna be super captivating. To me, there's not a whole lot to it that makes it stand out to the point where it's a fragrance that is distinct and one that I would gravitate towards a lot. I can kind of see this one as becoming a fragrance that I would maybe forget about a little bit. It would get placed on my shelf and you know, chances are I may not really reach for it all that often. So again, $20 is affordable. Keep in mind, that's for 50 mil. So if this came in a 100 mil bottle, you would essentially double that, maybe take off a couple bucks because it does get more affordable as you go up. Let's say it's it would be $38 for a 100 mil. Now you're up to a price point where you're competing with stuff like Azaro Wanted by Night and a few other fragrances, Halloween Man X, things in that nature. And actually Halloween Man X is even more affordable. Just stuff like that where it, they do a better job in uh, capturing that depth and that complexity. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The price per mil on this one is still a little bit high given the bottle size and everything. So that's kind of where I stand on this one. Now, does it remind me of anything in particular? Not really, not necessarily. So I guess that's a good thing, depending on how you look at it. You know, they weren't setting out to straight up clone another fragrance. I did see a couple votes on here for it smelling similar to uh, Mont Blanc Legends Night. Maybe a little bit, but I think that's a little bit of a stretch as well. I can tell this type of thing is gonna be a good compliment getter. And from the brand, this is the type of thing that's going to appeal to just the general public. Fragrance enthusiasts don't sit around waiting for another Kenneth Cole fragrance to come out. That's just how it is. I picked this one up just to check it out out of curiosity. And you know, it was cool to be able to bring this to you guys. But again, for me, with my collection, I don't think it's something that's gonna get a whole lot of attention. And a lot of you guys who are more serious collectors as well would probably find yourself in the same boat. So ultimately, yeah, it's a pleasant smelling scent. It's gonna be mass pleasing. It'll be a good compliment getter. Performance would have to be tested. I don't have the highest hopes for it. I don't think it's gonna to be too crazy strong. If you could get five, six hours out of it, I think you'd be doing good, uh, but I don't expect much more than that. If they would have made this an EDP, if they would have put some more focus on some more depth and some more richness, I think this is something that could have been pretty good. But as it sits right now, for me, it's just something that I would kind of gloss over. So let me know down below if you've tried Kenneth Cole Copper Black. If you have, what do you think of it? And if you haven't, uh, are you going to try it? It's funny, I was looking all around. If you get this in the right lighting, you almost can't see the text on the front. <laughs> it blends in pretty good. I was starting to wonder if I was losing my mind. Can't even really see it on the camera. But yeah, if you've tried this one, let me know what you think. Is it something that you're gonna be interested in trying? Uh, if you could get it for you know less than $20 somehow, maybe it'd be worth it. Uh, I guess even $20 isn't terrible, but I just don't see too many reasons to run out there and grab this one and try it. So I think that's gonna do it for me. I will link it up down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.